Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Alex Struggles to Cope in a Heatwave. Just kidding, this is actually going to be a favourites video, um, which I haven't done for a little while, so this is kind of like a June and July, maybe a bit of May favourites all mashed up into one, although a lot of this stuff is actually things that I've discovered quite recently, so it's basically just a July favourites. I haven't actually filmed for a little while, so I feel like I'm kind of, I don't know where to sit, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm a bit out of practice, so bear with me, but I'm gonna start with something that um, I need to talk about because it's gonna melt in a second. So, I have a little beverage here that I have prepared for you. <laughs> I talked to you guys a little bit about what's going on with me at the moment um, in, I think it was my What I Eat In A Day video, um, and I told you that I do get quite a lot of anxiety. It's something I've always had to deal with, but recently it's been a lot more kind of present in my life, which is not a good thing, but I feel like I wanna talk about it with you guys. And there are a few little things that if I can share it and it helps a couple of people, then that is always a good thing. So I, as you know, I'm a massive, massive coffee drinker. I love everything about coffee. I love coffee culture. I love the routine of it all. And obviously the taste of coffee and what it does to you. What I don't love about it is that it really, really brings out a very anxious, nervous side of me. Feeling like you're buzzing, heart palpitations, all those lovely, lovely things. So um, although it's something that I really have struggled to give up, I haven't actually drunk coffee now, I think for probably about a month, which is a big deal for me because it was something I was so used to doing every single day. So I kind of wanted to look for something to replace that because like I said, I think it is just the routine of getting coffee, making coffee that I really missed. It's kind of how I start my day. So without that, it was a bit weird. So I did a bit of Googling and a lot of people actually drink matcha in the morning. Matcha isn't something that I've ever really tried before. To me, it's very green looking and can't possibly replace coffee. But this is what I've been drinking in the mornings and throughout the day for the last month. And it's supposed to kind of have a very similar kind of energy boosting, like invigorating effect that coffee does, but without the anxiety and like the jitters and the come down as well. It's just a very evenly spread kind of energy boost, which I liked the sound of. So I got myself some matcha. This is from Matcha Ninja. I ordered this online, it's raw organic. And uh, this is actually one that you can make hot or cold. So obviously with the heat at the moment, all I've been drinking is ice matcha lattes. And I actually really like the taste. Matcha is kind of a very subtly sweet flavor on its own. So I don't need to add any sugar or syrups or anything like that. I just make mine up with almond milk. It's actually a really finely milled green powder and you get a funky little bamboo whisk and whisk everything up and then just pour it into your milk. And I really like it. It doesn't bring out any anxiety in me. Um, I feel like it does give me a good boost to kind of start my day and actually make it through to like lunch time without falling asleep. I also want to talk about a book, um, Welcome to Alex's Book Club, in which she just doesn't read at all. <laughs> Keep referring to myself in the third person, that's not cool is it? This I actually did read cover to cover in a day, which I'm not sure if that's actually a good thing because this is a very intense little read. This is She Must Be Mad by Charlie Cox and this is her first book. It's actually a collection of poetry and prose, which isn't normally my cup of tea, but I've read a few of her poems online. She posts a lot of them on Instagram and places like that. And I loved them. I just kind of fell in love with the style that she writes in. So I knew I had to pick up her book. I actually pre-ordered this and got it on the day it came out. And yes, yeah, so I sat down, I opened it up and the very first, I think it is the very first thing in here, which is called Love Part One. Uh, I feel like she wrote down my brain thoughts. I just related so much to every sentence, every line of that first little story. And um, yeah, I basically kind of sat there sobbing for about half an hour and couldn't stop myself reading the rest of it. It's just such a real uh, look at kind of like life and dating and being a woman and everything that I as a 26 year old just relate to so so much is crazy. This is actually one of my favourites um, and one that I think she's posted quite a bit. I think it's hilarious but also kind of like soul cuttingly true um, which I think is kind of like the theme of these. I feel like if you enjoy um, Rupi Kaur, um, Milk and Honey, The Sun and Her Flowers, you'll like this a lot but it's a little bit more, I don't know, darkly funny and truthful. And I also love the way she writes in that she rhymes a lot of her poetry, which makes it kind of cute and twee, but then when you're actually reading the subject matter, it's a little bit more hard hitting than that. So I've done a terrible job of explaining that, but I really highly recommend giving this a read. It's probably the best thing I've read this year. I need a little sippy sip. 
Okay, let's talk about some beauty bits. Again, this is very heat wave themed because I don't know about you guys, but I cannot bring myself to blow dry my hair at the moment. I just can't do it. I kind of got really obsessed with the idea of air drying my hair, which is not something I do that often. I watched quite a few YouTube videos on it and um, there's definitely some very varying opinions on how to air dry your hair. There's different techniques and rigorous steps to follow, which kind of seems to defeat the object of just being totally lazy and not even thinking about your hair. Some people obviously can just uh, wash their hair, run out the door and look amazing. My hair is not quite like that. Obviously it's bleached, it's processed, so it does get very, very frizzy if I just let it dry naturally on its own. So the one product that I think is kind of essential in my little uh, newly founded air drying routine is this from Way. I'm actually surprised at how many products there are out there that are kind of targeted at air drying your hair. It's like the hair care industry just said, we have to fill every gap. We have to find a way to sell things to people, even if they're doing absolutely nothing with their hair. Um, so this is the air dry foam. It's basically just like a mousse, but it's not got that sticky, dense texture. It's quite light. So what I do is I get out of the shower, I kind of wrap my hair up in a towel, do my skincare routine. And then before I use the mousse, I actually brush it. This is also another favorite of mine um, from quite recently. And this is a tangle teaser, although it doesn't look like one. I love tangle teasers, but my one massive gripe with them has always been that they fall out of my hand. So if you just imagine this looks like the original tangle teaser, I can never grip it properly. I drop it on the floor, it makes a bad it was just too much for me. So they've actually brought out one with a handle, which I think is really cool. Um, and obviously these are just the best, best things for brushing your hair, wet or dry, they're amazing. So I actually brush my hair with this. I do my parting and I kind of brush it quite straight and flat down. So it's just sitting at the side of my face, looking a little bit unattractive. And then I do one, two, three, like maybe four or five pumps of this. And I kind of just, I don't scrunch, but I just get it into my hair up to about here. So mainly um, lengths and mids. And then on the ends, I will put maybe like a leave-in conditioner, the Sasha one that I really like. Sasha Jawan, Sasha Wan, I can't, I can't say that. And that's it, I just leave it. I usually wash my hair in the evening, so I kind of just go straight to bed once it's dried a bit and then wake up with sort of like, they're not quite waves, they're not quite curls, but there's definitely some texture there. And I think that is down to this. If I just left it on its own, it would be like a frizzy triangle. So yeah, I really like this. It's lightweight, it doesn't really feel like anything in your hair, but it definitely makes a difference. Some makeup bits that I have been really liking. This is from a brand called Make, who I think are brand new. I think they have literally just launched. I've only tried this one product from them. They sent it to me. And um, at first I thought this was a highlighter, but no, it's a bronzing brick. It's in the shade Joshua Tree. And it does have that kind of like sheeny metallic sort of finish to it, but not in a really glittery way. So yeah, it's definitely not highlighter, but when you put this on your skin, it just, it looks so beautiful. It's super, super finely milled. I like to use my um, Sephora Duo Fiber Stippling Brush with this, just kind of get it all over and that gives a really nice light finish. But you can build this up. I literally put layers and layers of this stuff on and it kind of just feels like the perfect summer bronzer to me. I'm such a massive cream bronzer lover, as you guys probably know. So this is the first powder bronzer I've used in ages and I'm just obsessed with it. I really love it. Even if I have put my cream bronzer on, I will still go over the top with this. And I feel like you just can't put too much of it on. So I am super, super liberal that I douse my face in this stuff. So this I mentioned in my last video uh, when I was trying out some new in products and it was the standout of the video. And for me, it has been one of the standout makeup products I think I've tried this year. This is the Dior Show All Day Brow Ink. I originally had the darker color, or I think it's the medium actually. And then I went out and bought the lighter one. Both of these I can wear, um, depending on what my makeup's like that day. If I'm having a more natural day, I'll go for the lighter one. If not, I'll go for the dark. This is actually what I have on my brows at the moment. And I wanna show you what this looks like because I just think these are so cool. So to look at this with its packaging um, to begin with, you think it would just be a kind of brow gel, but no, it has this like angled, chiseled felt hippie nib sort of thing and the product i don't know it kind of just comes up like a stain but honestly it's so so easy to use it's kind of just like drawing your eyebrows in with a felt tip that is what it feels like to me it takes me seconds to do this i can do maybe like 10 seconds per brow it's like a few in the front and then out 
do the tail so quick um, when usually my brows are the longest part of my makeup routine. I'm obsessed with them. I think they're so, so good. Um, I feel like this is one of those things that's going to filter down into the drugstore so we might see some more budget friendly versions of these because I think they're around about £20 or somewhere in that region which is quite a lot for a brow product but happy to spend that because um, yeah I think these are so good. I just want to open this up quick before I start talking about it and smell it again. So this is my uh, final beauty favourite. This is from Diptyque and I have to say this is probably the most bougie, scarily expensive, um, unnecessary product to have in your life, but it brings me such joy. It really, really does. Um, so this is the, I'm not even sure what this is called. It's in French. I'm not going to say that part. It's the Invigorating Body Balm. Um, so Diptyque sent this to me and I didn't know much about it. I'd not really seen any of their skincare products before. I've not tried anything from the range apart from their scents and fragrances. It just looks like this waxy, orange or yellowy kind of thing and you get a little scooper oh i'm just knocking over my latte there this uh thing which usually if i see these in packaging i'll get rid of it i won't use them but i think it's kind of essential for this because it's so so solid if i tried to get a bit out of my fingers i don't think it would work as well so this i just kind of take a little bit on my scooper and not a lot at all and then as soon as you put it onto your skin i don't know if you can see this it just turns into this incredible oil and the smell of this. <laughs> okay, let me try and explain it. It smells like oranges. Orange is definitely the kind of undertone of how this smells, but it's so, so much more than that. It's kind of like a little bit spicy and fruity. It's light, but it's also deeper and musky. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's just amazing. And as well as smelling so good, it also is super hydrating and moisturizing. I mean, look at the glow that my arm has now. I've never actually smelt a Diptyque fragrance, um, anything like this one. If you know of one of their perfumes that does smell like this, please let me know in the comments down below because I feel like I just need this scent all over my body and my house and my life. So style favorites uh, recently. I'm gonna talk about these even though you've probably seen them in every single Instagram picture I've posted in the last month. These are my Bershka Celine ripoff sunglasses. Now, if you guys haven't heard the very long-winded story that I've told many, many times, um, these are kind of a dupe for the Celine Edge sunglasses, which I love. I love, love, love the look of, but they don't make them anymore. They're so difficult to find. I have found a couple of pairs, but they've been kind of like marked up to about $600, which I think is a bit excessive to spend on sunglasses. So I was kind of looking for a good replacement for them, even if I could just try the style out, see if I liked it enough to spend that much on the real ones. And I found these on ASOS and they are just from Bershka. They're so good. I love them. I think these are amazing. They are my favorite pair of sunglasses to wear at the moment. Oh, not that low down. They're very angular and they definitely, I don't know, say a lot, but I honestly think throwing these on with an outfit just makes such a massive difference. It kind of just elevates the whole thing. Sunglasses are obviously great for that in general, but these ones, I just love the, the way they add to an outfit so much. And they were maybe 10 pounds, maybe 12, maybe even less than that. Um, definitely a steal. So if they are still available, I'll link them down below for you guys. Favorite pair of sunglasses right now. I haven't worn anything else. I just think they're so good and I kind of wish I did have the Celine ones, but these are keeping me very, very happy for now. Also something else that you've probably seen me wear so much because I never take them off my feet are these. Uh, these are the ATP Atelier Rosa Slides and I feel like I mentioned these so, so much because they're always what I'm wearing when I do outfit of the days or what I wore in weeks, but I haven't ever mentioned them in favourites before, so let's give them some love. I cannot express to you how comfortable these sandals are. I had no wearing in period with them, which I thought I would because they kind of go up around your toe a little bit here. They've never hurt me. They've never been anything but incredibly comfortable, um, which is surprising as well because they have quite a thin sole to them. It's not cushioned, it's just leather. I love the style of them. They're very kind of me style. They're slightly kind of blocky 90s mum sort of sandal. That's my vibe though, I like that a lot. And yeah, they're just a shoe that I wear constantly. So I'm surprised I haven't mentioned them in favorites before. Have I talked for long enough? Have I talked for too long? I'm not sure. There is one more thing I wanted to mention actually, because I kind of talked about these a little bit on my Insta stories and I was basically making fun of me and everybody else that wears these. But I kind of have to eat my shoe now. Is, is that the expression? Eat my shoe? Eat my hat? Eat something? I have to do one of those because I love them and I can't be without them. 
Um, these are the AirPods, which I keep calling ear pods, but that's not right, is it? I won't show you them too close because I think mine need a little bit of a clean, but I was so skeptical about these because I didn't want to be the person walking around with uh, this situation going on. But I am now, I love them. They're so good for just kind of like throwing in your bag, running out the door, not having to worry about wires going everywhere, not thinking, am I gonna spend 10 minutes on the train detangling these and get to where I'm going before I even listen to any music. Absolutely life-changing. I couldn't be without them now. And um, if you guys are skeptical about looking like an idiot, just know that I'm walking around with these pretty much 24 seven, so don't you worry. While we're on the subject of music, I haven't actually, updated you guys on what I'm listening to for a while so let's do that wasn't planning on this so I am unprepared so I always have a playlist on my Spotify of what I'm listening to this month um, a few of you guys do follow me on there 12 of you <laughs> and that probably is a little bit of an indication of my shocking music taste but it is public so if you want to go and check out what I'm listening to I update it quite frequently my favorite song at the moment is probably um, don't delete the kisses from Wolf Alice I love Wolf Alice, I think their lead singer Ellie is so cool and I wish I was her, but that song is just constantly in my head. Every day, all day, I wake up, it's there. I go to sleep, it's there. I also have been listening to Ben Howard's album, um, his new album, and also Florence and Machine's new album, which the first song on that, I think it's called June, is so good, I really, really like it. I usually listen to a lot of The Cure, who are probably my favorite band. Um, I've got some Stone Roses on here, some Blur. We're just living in the 90s. Why not? That's where I wish I was most of the time anyway. So I think that is probably a good place to stop. Thank you guys so much for watching this favorites video. I hope you enjoyed it. Always love having a nice little sit down ramble with you and it's been a while. So that was potentially more rambly than usual. Um, but yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching. I really like knowing what your favorite things have been this month as well. Um, particularly your beauty recommendations. I always love kind of like trawling through my own comments and picking things out and making lists. So let me know those while you're here. And that is it. I will see you soon. Bye.